having lost a player and a teammate. There are many ways that the Redskins will try to honor the memory of Sean Taylor here today. One of those ways is that they will feature Taylor's number 21 on jerseys and helmets to be worn by players in this game. There's also a beautiful memorial with flowers and photos of the fallen star. And there will be a moment of silence to reflect the brief but yet shining career of Sean Taylor. Buffalo Bills lining up. Washington has only 10 players on defense. Reed Doughty is the guy who's expected to replace Sean Taylor in the lineup. He's on the sideline. Edwards on a handoff to Fred Jackson cutting to the outside. Jackson turns the corner. And see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Oh. Honoring Sean Taylor. The baby was not going to be alive because they had to stop the pregnancy. I think for me, the hardest part was just seeing the pain that she felt from having to deal with something like that. I needed to be there for my wife at that point in time. And so when she told me to go to the game, it was like, you want me to go to the game? She's like, yeah, you need to go. It was important for me because his son would be able to watch him play. And I'm like, me and your son, we're watching you. You got to go out there. He didn't want to. He kept calling me like, babe, I don't know if I can do this. I get over there about 7, 7.30, and I remember getting a call right when I got there. Keys came in, spent some time with him to see where he was at, and, and he was hurting, as expected. I told him how much we'd like him out there, but I told him how much we will all totally understand if he's not. And then it was, in, it was about an hour before kickoff, he let us know he was going. Third and eight from the 17. Bethard back to throw. Wide open for the speedster, Goodwin. Keish ran a perfect route. I remember it was just running down the sideline. Trent Taylor was right behind me, and we just kind of looked at each other like, oh my goodness, you know, like, I cannot believe this just happened. We had, hadn't won a game up to that point. The team won for the first time. I said, that was God right there. Our family, guys, and uh, our guy here experienced some pain here in the last 24 hours. But he came out, balled out for us. We appreciate that. We love you, man. Love you, man. Love you, Kevin was killed in a motorcycle accident in northeastern Virginia just after midnight this morning. Tory was then notified and left the team hotel in Baltimore at about 1.30 this morning to drive to Virginia to be with his family. But before he left, he spoke with John Harbaugh and said, Coach, I still want to play tonight. Harbaugh told him, don't worry about the game, just do what you have to do. Well, as you said, Tory rejoined the team this afternoon, Al, and Harbaugh told me he's such a great kid, I just want to respect his decision to play. Heartbreaking tweet this morning. At half past eight, I can't believe my little brother's gone. Be thankful for your loved ones and tell them you love them. This is the hardest thing ever. Receiver Torrey Smith playing just hours after his younger brother, Tevin Jones, died in a motorcycle accident. Smith tweeted about his 19-year-old brother, writing, be thankful for the ones he loved. Now, John Harbaugh said it's up to you whether or not you want to play. Torrey Smith played, and Michael, did he play well? Yeah, he played well. He showed up, man. He showed up for his brothers on the field, and he showed up for his brother in heaven. And every time he made a play, he pointed up, and you could just see he was overtaken with emotion. But he's one of the reasons, the big reasons, they won. 53-yard punt. And that's going to do it for Case Keenum. Teddy Bridgewater is back. That's tremendous reception for what Bridgewater has gone through to get to this moment. It was August 30th, 2016, torn ACL, left knee. It was a gruesome leg injury for Bridgewater. Has worked his way back, and Bridgewater will see some fourth quarter action here in week number four. A year ago at this time, they were 1-11-1. 
Going for the big ball. Got a man open. Ball is caught. Touchdown. Chad Ochocinco. And you know there's going to be a tribute here. For Chris Henry. Jim, you talked about it in the pregame. Chris Henry loved the game, and he loved big plays. Top of your screen, watch the outcut by Ocho Cinco, and then sticks that foot in the ground, and he is out running one of the fastest corners in the NFL. You saw his reaction after the touchdown, Phil. Well, yeah, you can see the tears, Jim. He's crying a little bit as he comes to the sideline. Hard not to think of a fallen teammate in the situation. He was, like after all, Big Irv Favre's son. Never more so than on a Monday in Oakland in 2003, the night after his father died. You know, Coach called and said, Miss Favre will do whatever you want. He can come home. I said, oh, no, his dad would really have a fit if he didn't play in the game. You know, and it didn't take long for me to say, you got to play in this game. All the times he told me to get my ass up, get your ass out there and play. Are you crazy? He knows when to be business, and he knows when to play. How Brett Favre is going to be able to handle this, I have no idea. I was so nervous before the game. I was the most nervous I've ever been in the game. When they call out the offense tonight at Oakland, I got a standing ovation from the fans. That doesn't happen. So under tremendous emotional duress, Red Farm goes to work. Under the perfect circumstances, I've never been able to do what I've done in that game. America's most well-known number four is thrown for four touchdown passes in one half of play. It was so emotional, but it was so special. I mean, it was like, you know, the entire game was specifically for his dad. Green for sure will be doubled at the bottom of the screen. Ravens trying to end it here. Fourth down, Dalton steps up, Dalton throws. It's complete, caught by Boyd, Tyler Boyd, touchdown. Remarkable! The Cincinnati Bengals have stunned this crowd. Can you check it? Hotel. And we was all sitting down, and I got I, I got the call from my mom. I just told him that Brad had been shot. I got that call, and I said he was gone. I just broke down. I walked like two miles, just thinking and crying. Just asking God why. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Guy coming up, carrying on, and they got into an altercation, and phew, he shoots him. 48 hours, 48 hours, I ain't sleep. I was in the hotel by myself, just sitting there, just talking to him. I didn't sleep. I don't know how I even played when I played for him. I could see it in his eyes how he was so anxious to be out there. And I know he wanted to say something, but he couldn't. On the opening drive, Alexander got his chance. It's intercepted in the end zone, picked off by the Buccaneers. And Quan Alexander brings it out to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. Do it for Broad. That's the first thing she got. Uh, yes. Do it for Broad, Quan. I'm afraid this one's coming back. Offside. Defense is right in. 
That was the shot. Oh, man. I was like, man, that was it. That was the pick. I just kept on going, kept on grinding. Then the plays started coming. Bootleg rollout, dumps the ball off short. Underneath, caught by Jacob Tammy. Tammy's lasso to drop on the 24-yard line. Quan Alexander's been everywhere in this first half. It hurt him, but in a way, it pushed him. And he was so passionate about that game. It's picked off, intercepted to the 40. That's a nice play by Quan Alexander, who is playing a whale of a game today. Like, Rod is with him today. That is his guardian angel. Rod took that ball like his <laughs> right. right. I didn't do none of it. He did it all. He was making the plays. I didn't make the plays. He was making it. By the final whistle, Alexander had 11 tackles, a forced fumble and recovery, and an interception. The game of his life. I wanted to be the first person to him after that game. He stood up when he could have laid down, and he played an amazing game for his brother. For Atlanta native Eric Berry, last Sunday's game held special significance. I shed a few tears before the game. The last time I came home during the season, it was to get uh, chemotherapy. So. Um, and then this time, it was actually to play the game, so I was just thankful. You know, I take pride in a lot of things that people take for granted. When opportunities come my way, I just cherish them and try to make the most of them. 13-13 time. 48 seconds remaining in the half. Fires it over the middle, intercepted by Berry! Eric Berry, who went through cancer treatments not far from here at Henry University, with the pick six near the end of the second quarter. Barry takes that football right over to his mouth. I made my mind up that I was going to give her the ball when I got it. You know, I can try to give her whatever. You know what I'm saying? It won't, it won't amount to the things she's given me and, and my dad as well. So many nights, I just was crying on their shoulder and, you know, trying to make sense of everything that was going on. And they just kept telling me, you know, just keep pressing, keep pressing. You'll be back. You'll, you'll be able to play the game the way you want to play the game. With less than five minutes remaining, a Matt Ryan touchdown pass gave Atlanta a one-point lead. Their attempt to stretch that lead to three with a two-point conversion would be the game's turning point. The Falcons will go for two, leading 28-27. We know all the things he's been through. And for him to have a showing like that in front of his family, very, very special family. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I think I held it together pretty good, but you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of emotions. All right, Steve, I gotta ask you the million dollar question. Was this your final game? Yeah, this is it. This is it. I can see the emotion that you're feeling right now. It's been 16 amazing years. What do you hope your legacy will be? I don't have to have, you know, a legacy is not what you give people, it's what you put inside people, and also what they put inside of me. There's a lot of guys I respect. I'm going to miss them. But, you know, at some point it comes to an end. Um, I got a beautiful wife at home, Angie, and four kids. I need their dad. And I need, I need my kids. So I'm going home to Charlotte to build my family. We got a, house, a new house we're going to build, so, you know, and I got, I got, a, I got a, a sophomore in uh, college, going to be college, uh, 
a junior, soon to be a junior, a daughter in uh, high school, a son in middle school, and a two-year-old. And um, I got a lot of catching up to do. You know, this game has given me a lot. But at the same time, I need to give my family more. Reggie White was back in Philadelphia's Veteran Stadium as the guest speaker for the Billy Graham Crusade. Reggie was told of Jerome's death moments before he took the stage, then broke the news to the Philly faithful. Tonight I had planned on sharing my testimony, but it's kind of been altered. Today, I lost a great friend. Philadelphia lost a great player. Jerome Brown died today. <laughs> you know, this man was a very special man to me. His family, very special people. Out of all the stuff that you heard about Jerome Brown, and the things said about him, and neither the negative stuff, this man was one of the greatest people I ever met and knew in my life. <laughs> 